Right then folks, chocolate box, timber frame cottage, thatched roof, got everything. You want to come and live in a place like this? Um, yeah, great, it's the, the country dream. But I'm going to do a quick building survey and show you the sorts of things that happen uh, to buildings like this. Now, number one, ground levels around the building are all very high and we'll show you the consequences of this but if you look I don't know if you can actually see through the window here but you can see the ground level there is a lot lower inside the building than out here and you can see all sorts of things that make you think there is a bit of a problem now this is obviously supposedly timber frame um, I've got a a little screwdriver here which I'm pushing in and you can see that we're going in that's timber or what's left of timber and if this is the usual thing people putting impervious coatings on top of the timber I think you can see here and the whole thing is just a horrible mess of um, impervious tar and paint and God knows what. There's a large beam inside, which you'll see in a second. Um, if I put that in, you'll see it is completely rotten. You can see that, it's just a lump of cement over the edge of the beam. Uh, completely rotten. modern brickwork, sopping white and timber and as you can see there's nothing left of it I've dug a little bit out here and you can see that that's just a hole with nothing in it uh, completely rotten timber so what we've got here actually apart from a chocolate box cottage uh, is a timber frame in not very good condition this is uh, this is all rotten and you can see this is cement that's the timber and there's not a lot left of it and if you if you follow down you start getting to timber here you can see if I take that off you can see that the, the timber is just rotten as a pair and uh, it's the same all the way along a uh, little bit peeled off there and that timber actually isn't too bad you can see that's that's relatively okay and there's just this stuff is peeling off quite nicely and that's good timber behind there so if we could get it all back to that we'd be we'd be good now if we if we walk in I'll show you the results of all of this now then you can see that the, the ground level drops and there is that outside level the bottom of the door and then a huge great step and if you follow around <coughs> you've now got a timber beam sitting on top of the plinth so this is somewhere under here is a stone plinth and we can see here just vast thicknesses of paint not very pretty all that horrible gloss paint on it you can see that it's trying to um, blow and you've got all this stuff going on this is just salt it's trying to escape this this multiple layers of thick paint it's horrible it's trapping moisture into it and there's nothing left of it if I keep putting this in you know it's just <coughs> there is basically no timber there it's gone so we've got a, a sill beam at ground level you think about it just outside there is the ground and you track along and the ground is if anything probably slightly higher than, than this piece of timber so you know you've got no chance it's rotten as a pear you can see it's just 
even that timber there on the inside is rotten. Thick coats of uh, plasticky, horrible paint everywhere. Uh, all needs to come off. This this stuff is just, you know, it's the devil's own work, and it should never be allowed on this kind of timber or on timber anywhere. And this continues, unfortunately, right the way along. You can see the the timber frame down there. It's all painted in black. It all looks very pretty, but unfortunately, there we go. I've just found another little bit, stabbed it in, and there's nothing here. You know, you're going into air most of the way. So there you go, rotten. If you have a look at this. On the inside, you can see that this was a dividing wall, and although painted, uh, there are some original features here. You can see here is the, the stave groove, and above it, in the beam here, there will be dowel holes, and then there would have been a, a vertical stave. So you put the stave into the dowel, and then snap it in at the bottom, snap another one in, snap another one in, and then you would weave in and out of those. So you've got your infill panel, so you weave hazel twigs to form the panel. And uh, I think if you look underneath here, you'll probably find there will be some dowel holes. Yeah, there they are. Let's get the torch. So those are the there's one there, one there, one there, and another one there. So those are the evidence that this was originally a filled partition. And if we carry on, I'll show you a little bit more. So bear in mind we're, we're getting to the back of the frame now. Again, same kind of problem. Um, here, a funny looking patch on the timber, but this is the, the sill beam. And I think you can see there, nothing left of it. So we're gonna have to spend a bit of time working out exactly what we're gonna do with this. I think this is gonna need a new a new sill beam completely and quite a bit of uh, timber redoing. I'll lose a torch in a minute. Um, there. So it's just completely rotten. I'm just pushing the screwdriver in, even the handle's going in. So what looks like dry, nice timber is actually not. And you can even see here if you, you look carefully. Um, I think you can see the, the drips, the water drips, where water's getting through on the bottom of the frame, so it's it's wet. Uh, telltale sign here, a little bit of dust. Um, and again, if you if you go in at the edge, there we go, we've poked the, the screwdriver right in. So wet, 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 wet. Um, we've got a little bit of timber there that looks like it might be solid, but there. And then I think you'll find that underneath that timber somewhere, it'll be rotten. So not a very happy sill beam. Now if we go outside. Yeah, it's a bit Again, look at the ground level. This is a seriously critical part of it. That's the ground level. And out here, it's actually higher. So where we are at the moment, we're looking at higher ground than the sill beam to the cottage. So the timber is actually buried behind that paving somewhere. So again, if you stand back and have a look, 
Yep. Okay, cool. You know, chocolate box cottage, it looks lovely. Very, very pretty. But when you start getting in close, you begin to realise that there is not a lot left of it. And if you look at all of this, you'll see these infill panels are falling out. This is just a complete, you know, it's, it's just it's just a wreck. So what we're going to have to do is effectively strip out the whole frame, the base of the frame. It's going to need a a new sill beam running from here right the way along all the way down the bottom and then all of these uprights these timber uprights are going to need to be connected to the sill beam um, most of these infill panels in here will come out they need to be removed to put the sill beam in so there's considerable work industry standard normally we talk about two thousand pounds or thereabouts per meter so if you save a sort of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's about eight meters of sill beam there needs to be redone. Eight meters of sill beam, so you're looking at 16,000. Um, I normally allow something in the order of 300 pounds per infill panel. So uh, the one in the middle of the picture there is brick. I'd take that out. I'd take that modern one out. Another brick one there. These probably actually do have some original. It's got cement over it, but I think actually underneath it's probably daub. Um, I suspect there's part of the original panel in some of these. Uh, we got cement there, and then these things up here. You can hear it's very dunky, and that is original. That's a Watland daub panel, but very, very soft and dunky as opposed to so you get a hard wrap off cement you get a soft dunky sound off these so they're original this one here I think you can see probably uh, cement coming down there and going up there so somebody's repaired the panel that's dunky that's cement. Where there is cement, there will be rot up against the timber because the cement is trapping moisture into the timber. So there's a lot to do here. So if you look at this, we've probably got about 16,000 in repairing the timber frame. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight infill panels, uh, 300 pounds a piece. Uh, that's about three grand odd, two and a half grand. Uh, and then numerous joints. Most of this is going to need rejointing at the very least. We need to get all of this off, all this paint needs to come off so it wants sandblasting, getting back to bare wood so we can actually see what timber has been damaged and what timber hasn't been damaged. Once we've got that timber exposed and bare, we can then remake the joints that need to be made. We can repair the timber frame at the bottom and the sill beam, put the infills back and we might take the opportunity to put back in some uh, lightweight insulated panels because these are relatively modern, they're single brick they're going to be quite cold so they won't be very nice inside, they'll be cold living in the house because of these modern infills so if we do these in a uh, lightweight wood wool board, sheep wool insulation, lime plaster they will look like the originals and they will be a lot warmer so it's not a particularly big job to do in, in the scheme of things, but nevertheless, um, I think you can see you've got both the front and the rear timber frame to do a lot of restoration work on. What's caused all the damage? Well, for the most part, it's the fact that the ground level is way too high. And you can see that next door uh, have actually dropped the sill beam. Uh, sorry, dropped the ground level, uh, and they've got gravel in there, and their, their, um, their ground is, is quite a bit lower. So they have obviously come across this problem and figured out what's going on. And you'll notice here that there is actually a new sill beam. It's in the wrong place. The sill beam actually should be a lot lower. This isn't where it belongs. 
um, but it's been put in to emulate a sill beam and the posts have been reattached to the sill beam. You can see where that post has been reattached. Um, hadn't been done very well because there's no peg holes in it, you can't see. You know, this should have a tenon, a slip tenon on the end of it and there should be some pegs in here where it's been tenoned together but uh, as you can see there are no tenons and no pegs anywhere and this hasn't been re-pegged I normally would re-peg all of these joints to give them strength uh, these haven't been and as you can see if you come back to this one you can't even see the joints, you can't see the pegs, you can barely see the timber, you just don't know what's going on um, so the best thing you can do with this is just strip it right back to the fabric uh, I think you can see here there's a little bit of a something a tie of some sort don't quite know where it goes or where it comes from um, and again you can see the, the wall bulging out there so you know this piece of timber is no longer attached to this upright so the thing's just waving in the wind that needs reattaching um, so I think you can see this just gives you a little bit of a flavour of doing a survey on a timber frame and the sorts of things that I look for um, ground levels influences it's got thatch um, the thatch is dripping and of course you can see the drip line there you can see where it's wet on the, uh, the, the, the paving they've tried to do a good job because they've actually sloped this so that it runs into a bit of a gully uh, there's the the gully that it's running in um, but you know what it's splashing and you know rain is hitting this and it's splashing up against the walls which is not good and if you if you look here you can actually see uh, on the base of the wall there you can see the dirt that's being splashed onto the wall so this is not a very good solution uh, what it should have is gravel the sort of gravel that's down in the bottom of that trench um, it doesn't have gravel so the the frame is under stress from water all the time it, it's not a happy frame um, so there you go that's that's just a, a very quick bit of a, a skim over um, oh the other thing the thatch probably got about 10 years left in it um, it's got quite a lot of moss uh, I would spray it with ferrous sulfate and kill this moss uh, and try and stop it from from getting any thicker uh, because that will hold moisture and it'll stop the thatch from drying out um, so you know a good spray over with ferrous sulfate will at least keep the moss at bay and it'll probably prolong the thatch for a little while but um, I think it, it's got about 10 years I'd say 8 or 10 years before it needs attention uh, it's had the ridge done probably a little bit more recently if you zoom in on that ridge you'll see it's been done so there's a little bit of work being, being done. Next Doors is more recent, that's been done in the not so distant future, uh, in not so distant past. So that's not bad. Uh, and this, this one's, it's not bad. It's got a bit of life left in it, but it, it, it's gonna need doing. Uh, old chimney, that needs a bit of attention too. So there you go, a quick video and description. I'll, uh, I'll come back with a few other features if I can, but, but that gives you the, the, the bottoms up. Overall cost for this, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to people, um, we probably need to spend at least 40,000 on this. I reckon 40 would be a good budget if you want to give a little bit of uh, ODME allowance, call it 50. Uh, and then you're going to get a, a fairly good job of sorting out the timber frame front and back uh, doing some landscaping sorting out the drainage at the bottom there and stopping water flashing splashing against the walls uh, doing the same thing around the other side the ground level there is too high that needs draining as well um, so with a lot of work to do with some landscaping there's carpentry uh, lime plaster infills painting lime washing a lot of work to do so I think 50 thou is probably a reasonable figure to be allowing if you're buying this place. Um, will the vendor cover that? We don't know. Haven't got a clue. Um, 
but being realistic, that's what this place needs. So there you go, folks. Um, a quick thumbnail survey of a, a thatched timber frame cottage and quite a few problems. The reasons for those problems, high ground levels um, and the solutions. So fixing it, dropping the ground levels, rough costs and so on and so forth. So there you go.